Hey guys, welcome to The Art of Comics. I'm your host, Andre Salazar. Today we're doing something a little different. I wanted to go through my epics. I've been having a great time with Ariel going through heavy metal one by one, and uh, I'm kind of jonesing right now to do some more comic stuff, and I thought, why don't I go through these? I'm here by myself, it's getting late, I'll just do one episode. Just let's do it. Now, I haven't read these in years and years. And so I'm just gonna grab this one here, which is summer of 1980. I only have like, what do I have? I only have six of these. So now I'm really gonna have to start looking for these. <laughs> I might have to look for more of these magazines. Um, so I'm gonna just go through one and uh, we're gonna do it together. I have not read this in forever, so I'm not gonna give necessarily any comments on the story, but I'm gonna just check it out. Um, and let's just do it, right? Let's just check this out. So here we are, Art of Comics, Andre Salazar, Epic Illustrated, Marvel Magazine. I believe this is really, you know, they saw magazines like Heavy Metal and 2000 AD and those kind of anthology stories and said, you know what, let's do this. Let's take the European art stuff and let's see what we can do. Um, first off, I gotta say something about this beautiful cover by Richard Corbin, huge fan of him. Um, not only can he draw women and muscles and anatomy and monsters, but the painting is just brilliant. I'd love to see what the size of this is. I'm assuming it's gotta be 24 by 20 or so. It's gotta be pretty big. Um, love it. So 1980, Heavy Metal's been, been around since 77, so it's gotten steam. So this, is to me, is really the golden era of, of adult magazine, you know, uh, illustrated magazine stuff. Brute 33, I used to have that. <laughs> I used to, I remember my mom gave me some Brute, Brute 33, dude, um, when I was a kid. So let's take a look at what we got going on here today. Um... Oh, I love all these cigarette ads and stuff. You don't do that nowadays, you know? It's kind of old school. What do we got here? Is my big head in the way? I hope not. Where's the light? Oh, no, I think it's good. Um, so we've got Roy Thomas, Tim Conrad, oh, Marv Wolfman, Steve Bissett. Ooh, Steve Bissett and Rick Veach. Very exciting to see. Don't know who Maurice Horn is. James Starlin, oh wow. Ooh, P.K. Russell. Archie Goodwin, oh cool. So, oh, some Howard Chaikin, my neighbor. Archie Goodwin, yeah, we got some cool stuff. So this is exciting, this will be kind of fun to check this stuff out. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at this. So here's our little, um, I don't know what this is here. Just notes on stories and contributors. So, yeah, I'm just going to gonna skip over some of that stuff. Oh, I remember these. TKD Metal. Yeah. So the whole deal was like the metal cassette. You know, if it was metal, it would like record better or have more higher fidelity. And you can like, yeah, so this is so crazy. Um... I don't really know if they were better at all, <laughs> but I remember buying them. I remember getting cassettes over the metal. Okay, what's our first thing going on here? Roy Thomas and Tim Conrad. This is uh, Robert Howard. Hopefully there's no gloss on these things. I'm gonna try to like hold this up like this so then you don't get gloss on that. One of my lights above is killing me. Um, let me look at this Tim Conrad. Huh. Just kind of reminds me a little bit of Vigil. It's got definitely like a Frazetta kind of influence there. Oh, no, this is totally different, though. This definitely looks different than that first page. Okay. I've never been a fan of this cursive writing. Um, I don't know. I just couldn't get into when when they when they do the cursive stuff. And this is before computers, so I'm assuming some dude is sitting here with his crow quill or rapidograph, uh, probably rapidograph looks like, and he's just using the Ames guide and cursing this out. It's 
does not sound fun at all. I can't even do cursive nowadays. I, I write and print so much. Um, I kind of want to practice cursive there every now and then. I do like these panels. This is kind of neat, the shard glass. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, all these, like the panel, the page layouts are kind of neat, and this kind of duality or kind of, is pretty neat. I dig that. Yeah, I actually like this. I like these pages, these pages here. This reminds me of some of those old, uh, some of those old Eeries or EC Comics. He's putting some tone on there too. It's like a zip tone or some sort of a maybe duo shade. It's hard to tell. Yeah, that's, I like that. This is cool. And some some of the little effects. He's using dry brush there for the moon. So there's some kind of neat little little effects going on. Dig that. I like that. Yeah, this is well done. I think I just didn't like that. Uh, for some reason, I don't like this. I don't like these two pages. But then I like this. I don't like this. <laughs> uh, oh, this is nice. Yeah. I'm going to have to look up this guy. Tim Conrad. This is neat, too. Yeah. And then we're back into color. color. Hmm. That's a neat. That's a neat little background there with the the planet nearby and the moon right there. That's cool. Oh, Esau, Karen. Huh. Esau. You know, in the Bible, Esau is this hairy guy that lo lost his. Lost his um, inheritance from Abraham and gave it to Jacob, who became Israel. That's where the 12 tribes come from. Esau lost it. Okay. Um, what is this? Oh, okay. Yeah, this is a oil filter. Right on. So they're assuming people who buy this magazine, they're adults. This is an adult magazine. Does it say adult? No, it doesn't say adult, though, huh? Oh, yeah, it does. Oh, this is the second issue. Oh, I need to get the first. Okay. Visual Odyssey of Adult Fantasy and Science Fiction. Hope's End. Ooh, this is neat. Marv Wolfman. Oh, it's kind of biblical. It's got these kind of like um, verses. That's neat. And this, the painting done by uh, Deanna Gra Grazunias. I don't know her, but I like this a lot. This is really nice. Can you see this? Yeah, this is very cool. Nope, that was it. That was all she wrote for that. And then now we get some Steve Bissett and Rick Veach. So this is 1980, so this is before they worked on uh, Swamp Thing. This is uh, pre-Swamp Thing stuff. But all the energy here, a lot of gesture, all really quick, you know. Quick stuff, and I like the painting here, I like the whites. They're using the white acrylic and stuff to kind of give the bubbles and light. That's good. Hmm. This is a cool panel, too. I like this. This page. It's interesting the the paper stock on these. I get uh, we're getting like I don't know what's going on. There's like dull paper and then there's like glossy paper mixed in. Cause this is a glossy paper here. This is a glossy and this is dull. I don't know what's going on with that. What's up with the <laughs> why? I get the cover being glossy, but yeah. So these are glossy. Yeah. So somehow some of them are nicer paper than others. The glossy will probably screw up our camera. So I'll have to try to bend it a bit. Um, who's the art on this one? Oh, there's the set. So this was the yeah, the same story. So there's a Rick Beach. I'm assuming. I just started thinking about Johnny Quest because uh, I watched a documentary here on YouTube uh, a couple of nights ago, and I'm like, I want to watch some Johnny Quest. I haven't seen that in forever, but you know. 
a big fan of Alex Tove, and he worked on it. And I just love the designs, and I thought it'd be kind of fun to watch. I might try to check some out. This is neat. This is pretty neat. Huh. Kind of neat little strip. Heavy Metal does that too. They'll do like one or two like strips. Uh, Fantasy and the Fantastic and European Comics. Ooh, what is this? This is Droulette, right? Yeah. I said, you, can, you can't not know something is Droulette just by the way the details and just his art style is, is so uh, unique and um, I haven't seen anybody like him. So this is kind of an interesting article. I should I should probably damn, I should read this damn thing and then talk about it. Sorry about that, guys. I'm kind of just winging it. See, glossy paper, and now this is like a dull paper. I don't know what is up with that. Oh, this is Cripex. This is a uh, Cripex. 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 Yeah. Valentina. I heard. I've. I've seen, I've, I have one of his books. I wasn't super in love with it. I think I need to get some other stuff of his. I know he's considered one of the best there. There's Mobius, yeah, John Gerard. Yeah, okay, so they're just going through different uh, of the kind of the classics or the European masters. That's great, look at that. Can you see that good? This is wonderful. Anytime there's like a Mobius thing, I wanna like zoom in on it. I need to make like a scrapbook. <laughs> Just my piece of scrapbook. Okay, what is this? Metamorphosis Odyssey. Whisper. Oh, this is the Jim Starlin. I didn't. Mm, I didn't know he wrote Andrew. It's, I thought. Yeah. I'd be getting mixed up. Huh. Little fairy girl, fairy woman. This is neat. It's neat to see Starlin and other, you know, comic book people we know from like, you know, doing Marvel and superheroes doing like painting and adult stuff and kind of like more mature things. It's just neat to see people's chops doing other stuff. I just like that a lot. I think that's kind of a, a good way to do it. Just, you know, you get to see them. They probably enjoy working kind of almost in a different medium, you know. Uh, it's still sequential, but, you know, painting is a totally different than penciling Captain America punch a Nazi, you know? Um, so I dig that. And he gets to draw a little, like, monster penis. That's kind of fun for him, I guess. Uh, there's, like, this stuff here. It seems interesting to start out black and white and then it kind of goes into this color, just now kind of shifting. I like these marks here on the background, kind of like tree thing. Not big on this purple here, but, but that's okay. I like that. Gotta have the splatter. Give it, give it the artsy fartsy, you know, splatter deal. Craig P. Russell. Now, Craig P. Russell is one of the best. I love this guy. He's great. Um, I don't know this story, but I'm a big fan of his stuff. From the story of Richard Wagner. Huh. Siegfried the Dragon. Yeah, look at this stuff. He's great. Oh, all my pages are falling apart. Yeah, look at this. This is great. It just I love his hatching and just um, creating creating volume with with his line work, and then look at this here. This is a really great page. This just the depth, you know, the different levels and layers of different things. He could have stopped there, but then he put these like pine trees in the back, and then he does another layer, the kind of moon that looks. I mean, the sun that looks like a crosshairs, you know. And you got these just, just diff all these layers of texture, not textures, but just different patterns. Yeah, that's really neat. The lettering is kind of cool too, kind of a psychedelic. Yeah. He's great. No one could draw fantasy like this guy. He's just, um, I wonder who color, the coloring's neat too. I 
that's another great panel. Kind of a Donis kind of character. Oh, look at that. That's cool. Yeah, that's great. Doesn't this feel 70? This was 78. I mean, this feels so much like, again, like those, you know, it's this era. The kind of, um, you know, old Hobbit, you know, with Bink and Rask, you know, Hobbit and, and stuff. Okay, what's this here? Interview of Fear and Affection in Outer Space. A conversation with Glenn A. Larson by Steve Swires. Did not know who Glenn A. Larson is. Clearly I should. Book Rogers. Uh, look at that though, I like this a lot. He must have done some film production stuff. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Glenn Larson, the guy who created Battlestar Galactica. Biscuit. Yes. As, yeah, yeah, the creator of Battlestar Galactica and producer. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't know he, he worked on Buck Rogers, though. Buck Rogers was the bomb, dude. This woman right here, dude, it was all about that. It was all about Buck Rogers. Oh, yeah. I went, Twiggy was the little robot dude, and he had this little, like, professor doctor thing in a little canteen that glow, glowed. I went to a fair when I lived in Little Rock, Arkansas, as a kid, like, I don't know, I was eight, and I was so scared to go meet Twiggy, and the whole point was, was me to go meet Twiggy, and my mom forced me up there to meet Twiggy, and it traumatized me. Uh, <laughs> but, you know... I got to meet Twiggy, damn it. Yeah, look at this stuff. These are great production designs. So Fred Hope did some of these concept drawings. Yeah, I I love all this kind of stuff. I really like kind of worlds. And I love all these drawings, dude. You know, this style stuff. You know, Star Wars did a lot of this stuff too. I love it. I, um, I want to learn how to do this stuff. <laughs> Oh, uh, what is this? This is delightful. What is this? I'm gonna look it up real quick. I know we'll find it in a minute, but what is this? This is, um... Oh, it's Archie Goodwin. Yeah. Oh, this is, this is really nice. Look at that. Can you see that, you guys? This is great. I, I don't know why. Just, this really just, like, grabs me a lot. Yeah, I love this stuff. I love the cartoon, the expression, kind of the abstract moments, you know, the hair with the, this. I love this. This is just brilliant. Wow. The positioning of the people, creating that, like, you know, space. This is great, too. Look at those hands. Look at this. What a cool comic. Yeah, I dig this a lot. I mean, there's, there's style, there's, I mean, if someone looks at this and says, oh, that's just like kid stuff. No, dude, there's like design work here and thought and cleverness. And look at that. This is really neat. Yeah, I love that. That was cool. Oh, here's how we're taking. Yeah. So Howard's just doing the art. Uh, he writes, he does do some writing. I think Stardy Co, but, uh, excuse me, Cody Starbuck, he wrote, I believe. That's another thing. I don't know who Samuel Delaney is. Probably should. I really like this early Chaikin stuff. I like the 1980s Chaikin. Um, I love his painted stuff. I know it takes forever and it's not worth it financially. Just like, again, time and money. And it's not probably worth it. But darn gummin' if it's not cool looking. And he knows color. He knows all of it. I mean, come on. He's, he's one of the best. He's a master. One of the masters. He's great. And uh, I'm gonna... It's nice and fancy paper. And it's, it's gonna, glossy's gonna jack it up, unfortunately. I'm trying not to. But, um, yeah, look at that nice deep purple against the red. Here, I'll do that there. Yeah. Yeah, these backgrounds are really great. Just, 
He's always good at texture and like um, decorating. He's great with costumes. He's very um, aware of costuming and aware of design of backgrounds and things like that. And then he does these fun artsy stuff, you know, and cool ideas. Uh, I'd love to see the originals. These were pretty big, I think. These were not, you know, normal 11 by 17s. I'm assuming they're probably a little bit bigger. At least 13 by 19, I would guess. Um, I could be completely wrong. But of the originals I've seen, they are big. He goes, goes a little big sometimes. Um, this is neat. Yeah, this is all really cool. Nice little splattery stuff and deals. Yeah. I like his stuff. Yeah, look at that. He's, he's drawing some cool metal stuff too, you know? He he can he can turn it on when he needs to. He's using a lot of airbrush. You know, he used an airbrush back back then. Um I wanna read the story now. Kind of dune. Didn't he do some dune work? I don't know. This guy it has a bit of a dune vibe. Maybe just the colors remind me of it. Yeah, these textures. I mean, so just to show. I mean, just to like do these bricks and these these like um, stone floor. That takes you know that takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort. There's at least four or so levels or layers of paint on here that he's doing, and uh, that's not that. You know, easy and quick. It takes time. You know, he's using rulers, he's using a lot of stuff. He's not he's not farting around. Dude. Tarn's world. Here's another Archie good one. It's very different. This looks almost like airbrush too. The smoothness and uh some of here, I'm not sure what's going on. Looks like it might be an airbrush. Could be wrong. Yeah. I'm not super energized by this art necessarily. I recognize that it took time and effort and skill, but I'm not like jazzed about it necessarily. Although it could be an amazing story. <laughs> Prologue, what is this? Oh, I like this. What is this? I like this. Ernie Colon. That remind that that name. That might be someone who does creepy or, or some of those worn magazine creepy and um, eerie. I could be wrong, but that name sounds familiar. I really like the line work. I like this here. Yeah. Blacks. I don't know why. I'm, I'm so fearful of just laying down a big chunk of black on it. But I do like it. I need to get over it. Oh, this is a really cool panel. Look at that. That's cool. The face and yeah, the great eyes. Yeah, that's great. It's really nice. Yeah, makes me think about what I'm doing. I'm putting a little bit more of a pencil, but I really like this kind of thin, the pictograph line right there. This is nice too. Look at that. Both of these. It's a great. I mean, that's from a photo probably, but I don't care. You know, that's good. That's a good face, too. Yeah, those guys are great. It's one of my favorites. Yeah, I dig it. My hand's a little wonky, but it's okay. Okay, that's good. And then what do we got here? What is this little paint? Oh, is this? We're back on the... Uh, this is our Conrad guy, right? Yeah, this is Conrad. Tim Conrad, yeah, finishing that story up. That's a great page. There we go. Okay. Um, so that's Yukon Jack. Some, some booze. And some more booze. Um, that was 
the episode Epic Magazine, Summer of 1980. I have not read this in forever. I literally just <laughs> walked through this. That was kind of fun though. I liked that. That was enjoyable. Let me know if that was worth it or should I do a lot of research and like strategize and have notes for this. If you want that, I'll do it. But if you're fine with me just flipping through this and chit-chatting, uh, I'm totally down with that and it's kind of fun. So thanks for watching. Uh, tell your friends. Um, subscribe and all that goodness. Check out my Patreon. I got a bunch of comics and stuff I'm doing. Almost every day I'm posting stuff. So check all that out. A lot of that's free too. You don't have to join. Uh, thanks a lot, guys. Have a good one.